All right, our next case is uh, Breen versus Winkle. Uh, this is a situation involving a, um, a husband and wife who were involved in a, in a particular business. They had a, a, a small uh, boutique in which they were doing um, uh, decorating. They had a retail bath boutique and kitchen remodeling business. And they had some cash flow problems. And apparently what happened was they hired uh, the defendant, Winkle, who was an attorney, for legal advice because they wanted to get out of their problems. So uh, apparently what happened was they were charged with criminal offenses uh, as a result of their, their cash flow problems. And um, they were charged with uh, failing to pay the subcontractors. Uh, the husband pled no contest to three misdemeanor counts uh, and, uh, by theft of contractor and the charges against the wife were dropped. So after this, as a result of, of these criminal charges that were brought against the Breens, they filed suit against Winkle, who was their attorney. And they, they charged him with negligent uh, representation. They, they, you, know, you, you go to a lawyer, uh, you want some proper legal advice, and, and that's what they sought from him. And uh, in this particular case, the, the, uh, they were claiming that because of his negligence, uh, the criminal charges were brought against the, the, the plaintiffs here, the Breens. And, uh, they went into arbitration. They agreed to go into arbitration. And the arbitrator concluded that Winkle had negligently provided legal services and awarded Gerald, the husband, uh, $85,000 for loss of earning ca earnings capacity and $50,000 for emotional, emotional illness and distress. The arbitrator awarded Sharon $25,000 for attorney's fees and other expenses for defending the criminal prosecutions and damages for loss of society, companionship, and consortium with her husband. Um, so this is basically what you call a lousy lawyer case and, 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 bear, and it's, a, it's a cautionary tale. It's a kind of a situation that you don't want to be in when you're an attorney. Uh, this is a situation where the attorney apparently did not properly perform his task, and as a result of his improper uh, handling of this, of this uh, situation for his clients, the clients were fa fi clients faced criminal prosecution and, and punishment. So they went to arbitration, and uh, the, the gist of this, this decision is whether or not the uh, arbitration's award is, is, is valid. And there are several issues that are brought about uh, as a result of this. Uh, bear in mind that this goes into the area of contract law because the parties agreed that they would have a, uh, 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 they'll go to arbitration, and that contract to go to arbitration was uh, very key to to the court's decision. And uh, the court identifies what Winkle's uh, claim is on appeal. He's saying that uh, he does the facts don't support the Breen's allegation of compensable, compensable emotional distress. And uh, the court says, you know, we don't necessarily agree with that. Um, the court goes on to identify several other precedents in which um, uh, there was a situation where a person was uh, injured, his house was burned down because his fireplace was improperly constructed, you know, the whole house burns down, and he suffered emotional distress because of the burning down of the fireplace. Um, the court cites the Fleur case, and, and whenever a court cites a case more than once, you want to be very careful to, to uh, pay attention not only to what that court said about that case, you may, if you have the extra time, look at that original case and, and look at those facts as well because it's very important uh, if you have that kind of time. Um, and the court says that uh, alternatively, even if the arbitrator concluded that Gerald had suffered no physical injuries, he could have concluded that applying the rationale of Bowen to this non-bystander case uh, physical manifestation of emotional distress is no longer required where the plaintiff proof, proves severe emotional distress. Now, in, in, at the time of this uh, decision, uh, apparently the standard was whether or not there was some physical evidence of the emotional distress, whether there was some uh, physicality that was, that was connected. And uh, the court uh, goes, you know, identifies the president and talks about that. And um, the plaintiff, the defendant, uh, who's on appeal here, uh, claims that uh, there was that the award violated some strong public policy. Uh, as it turned out, the plain, the, the the defendant on appeal, the, 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 the uh, defendant in error, plaintiff in error, um, plaintiff in error, uh, didn't cite any cases. And one of the most important things you have to learn as a lawyer is that if you're going to assert any legal claim. Uh, 
uh, in any court, you've got to have you have to have some legal authority. It's got to be you know some some precedent, some statute, something that says that this is this is uh, the basis for for my argument. He didn't do that. The court did not identify any particular reasons for that. So that public policy uh, argument uh, did not hold any water. So. Uh, the court said that we conclude that the, this language is not reasonably susceptible to more than one construction and therefore and unambiguous and you know, talk about the, the no cost provision in in, um, in the con in the uh, uh, in the contract for the arbitration the, 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 the arbitration agreement says no cost if there's a dispute we're not no we, we won't there's no payment of cost and because that language is unambiguous there's no reason to, uh, to, to, to set it aside, and the court held that there's no cost. Um, and uh, this is a, a case to read over, and uh, you, know, you should read it and, and you know, really get some insight as to this area of law.